Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose, and I'm here to share your daily astrology with a little help from Tarot. Here I'll discuss the tarot card that sits on the side of the page, then I'll make a quick review of the day's astrology, and I will follow up by playing another tarot card, which usually gives us a little something more to think about. So let's get into it. This tarot card that sits on the side of the page right now is the Four of Cups. And it's there because it relates astrologically to the last 10 days or the third decan of the sun's transit in the sign of Cancer. Cancer is a water sign. Cups are water in the tarot. And the water element symbolism is very much about our emotional, intuitive, and creative experience. So here we have the Four of Cups. And what we see is sort of a picture of um, at least contemplation, if not in, in general, some sort of apathy. Kind of uh, this person is sitting on a hill in the grass. They've got their arms crossed in a sort of uh, dissatisfied or kind of I've had enough <laughs> expression as they look at these three cups sitting down here and there's another cup coming in and we can't be certain whether that person sees this or not they seem so focused on these other three cups so uh, what do the cups case cups represent they represent emotional experiences intuitive experiences creative experiences we've had and sometimes you know if you've just been through a lot lately in terms of you know, emotional, intuitive, or creative experiences, um, one wants to hit the pause button and say, wait, hold up, give me a little moment to process. Let me, let me think about where I've been so that I can also think about sort of the terms by which I take in new offers, right? But we don't want to become completely dis disconnected. We don't want to be ignoring gifts from the universe, okay? Um, when we uh, close ourselves off to the possibility of new emotional, intuitive, or creative experiences, we also cut us off to potentially very joyous or happy experiences um, or, you know, experiences that will allow us to grow. So, uh, yes, pause to process if you feel the need to. But don't forget that you have to remain open. You know, life goes on and more emotional experiences are, are coming our way. You know, it's good to make an assessment and think, I know, I know now the terms by which I will engage in that experience again, <laughs> right? So when this new offer comes in, you can be a little bit more informed, a little bit more savvy about what's happening for you. And with that, with that in, with that, all of that said, <laughs> the, I'm going to, let me start over again. With all of that said, I'm going to shuffle my cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is in Cancer. And we're, here we are, the last eight days of Cancer, so these themes might be becoming a little more intense for us around our desire to nurture and protect certain people, certain spaces in our lives, certain parts of ourselves even. Um, and, you know, Mercury is in Cancer too, so you know, we kind of express ourselves uh, in terms of what it is that we desire to nurture and protect what we feel attached to, okay? In cancer, we can become attached to things in a pretty kind of hardcore way where it's hard to let go, okay? So we wanna be discerning about what we allow ourselves to get attached to at this time. Uh, Mercury does give us that power um, and and it gives us that insight into how we're truly feeling about something, um, but it also, you know, sort of takes away our power necessarily to uh, communicate in a direct way. Cancer is more of a sideways uh, you know, showing you or, or finding a way to say it that isn't just like, this is how I feel, okay? So um, it's, I, I think it's an interesting practice, especially at a time, at a time like this, to look around at your friends and loved ones and just notice the ways that they do show you that they care or they do continue to show up for you because sometimes people just don't, you know, give us care in the way we wish that they would because they don't know how to do that. That's not how they show care. You know, we have to sort of um, take the care that people have to provide on their terms, of course, as long as it's not harmful to us or to them. Uh, moon is a waning gibbous now. We are on the on the waning side of the full moon. And it's in Aquarius. 
So waning gibbous is a time when we reflect, okay? There's still a lot of sunlight being reflected off of the off of the moon right now. So we reflect on how things have gone for us over the past month. And, you know, we start to really begin to look back and say, okay, yeah, that went great, but there are things that I would like to see go better. And, you know, we can begin to detail those things. Moon in Aquarius, you know, this takes us up out of our hearts and homes and out into public to sort of um, meet with our allies and, and coordinate with people to, to uh, hopefully the betterment of the whole community. So, you know, it might not be a bad time, Saturn retrograde style, to just be reflecting on our contributions to community and collective um, yeah, uh, and, and recommitting ourselves where we know that we're falling short of what we would expect of ourselves. So on the moon side of the page today, we have a few aspects. Moon goes square to Uranus this morning, and this can be a really sort of jumpy vibe, a little bit excitable, but not necessarily in a in a fun way, <laughs> a little kind of nervous energy, okay, can get us bouncing around or... Um, you know, making impulsive changes that may not come across well and, and, and perhaps, you know, aren't, aren't really there to serve any purpose other than the desire to make a change in the moment. So remember your grounding practice. Remember to breathe. Remember what it's like to be in your body and go forward at a, at a, <laughs> at a predictable pace. I would say stick with the plan this morning, okay? Moon goes conjunct to Saturn this afternoon right around 5.30, and, you know, this can, I mean, that conjunct is really intensification. It intensifies the feeling vibe and, and it intensifies the Saturn vibe, which is about structure, dedication, discipline. And, and when that's conjunct with the moon, it can be a little bit like a, a restricted feeling, like something is holding us back or keeping us from expressing ourselves, kind of like that sun conjunct Chiron. Um, and that conjunct, well, that's a sun square Chiron, and that conjunct is almost compelling. So uh, it might be a time when we feel compelled to share about any feelings of restriction that are coming up for us. And then late this evening at 11.36, the void of course moon goes trying to Venus. That's a blessing of positive feelings. We are just, we have these open receptive hearts and we can connect with other people, uh, draw good people toward us and have um, you know, very positive, even blessed outcomes from those interactions, followed by a void, of course, is three and a half hours. It spans the midnight hour. Okay, so this is a great time for spell and ritual. <laughs> if you if you do those kinds of things, um, you know, and at this time, just because the moon is now a waning gibbous, I would, if I were going to do any ritual or spell, it would be um, around the the desire to be able to see clearly um, what is behind me and what is ahead of me so that I can be really um, cognizant of the changes that I'm shifting through. Another, uh, another suggestion I would make uh, would be, you know, to um, say a prayer or um, do a ritual or um, make a wish on the moon uh, that sort of uh, asks that you be released from your attachments, okay? And the way I would say it, the way I have said in the past is just to say a prayer to release sort of all attachments, known and unknown, that no longer support or uplift me, right? So those are a couple of options for, you know, waning moon sort of magic ritual or spell work. Uh, under, you know, around midnight tonight when the moon is void, of course. And of course, we we like, we can engage in those things at any time, but I like the, the void, of course, moon because um, the moon is sort of between um, signs at that time. So it's kind of not coming to us through a filter and we can, you know, sort of connect our inner moon, which is just our inner life, our inner experience with the outer moon up there, and we can have that conversation. We're kind of having a conversation with our deeper self or our, our higher representation of ourself. And so we empower ourselves at that time um, from deep within to help us out um, up here on the more conscious level. On the sun side of the page today, um, Venus goes 
quincunx to Pluto, okay? And this can bring about conflict, especially when it comes to those things we like, love, and can't get enough of, um, those very close loving relationships, those friendships, but also our finances, our money, right? So some conflict may come up, but it's not the kind of um, thing that would be just really so obvious. It's something that's subtle um, and, and kind of sneaks up on us, right? Like, I'm not sure I think that thing you just said was a problem for me. And I'm going to have to wait until you say something like that two or three more times to be clear that that's really a problem, right? But this is not a time when we want to be making ultimatums or demands on other people, okay? We want to be very kind and gentle with ourselves and with our loved ones and very kind and gentle with ourselves about our finances as well, okay? But look for anything that energetically seems to you like a, a leak or a sapping of the energy from your relationship or from your, uh, from your bank account specifically. In the ongoing column, we have this uh, beautiful little baseball diamond here. Sun is square to Chiron and so is Mercury. And this really says there's a situation in our lives, an area in our lives where we feel we are being kept from expressing ourselves in a genuine way. Mercury square to Chiron says even some conflict might arise with other people about what we or they think is, you know, an appropriate form of self-expression out in the world. And, uh, you know, it's very frustrating when you are in this context where you're supposed to be able to be yourself and be comfortable. And, uh, you know, you're getting signals that, no, that's not going to work. And, and we really would rather you did not, you know. So, but the, the solution is nearby too. Sun is sextile to Uranus. This is very much a try something different. It will work out for you kind of vibe. And Mercury is sextile to Uranus too. It says, you know, you're very clever and you have a quick wit and you can change your mind about things. You can make up new things. Okay. So you can come up with an idea about where you could go or how you might better be able to express yourself in the long run. Um, kind of if you just shift your focus and try to do something different. All right. Do so don't don't keep going back to the same old place or the same old people and expecting them to act differently or trying to get them to act differently we don't have any control over the behavior of other people we certainly don't have any control over the behavior of like things that are bigger than people like corporations or institutions right but we do have control over ourselves and we can try something different we can put ourselves in a new situation we can put ourselves in a new group of people or you know under the auspices of a different institution and um and we can do that. We can really think for ourselves at this time and find a new way, a new path to that self-expression we're looking for. Also in the ongoing column, Venus is trying to Saturn. This is ideal vibes for like what we are doing uh, and we can't even help it. <laughs> it's this blessing where we are just attracted to and attracting to us uh, more um practical solutions, things that feel solid, things that feel stable, things that will contribute to our security. That trine vibration is like, you know, the angels are smiling down on us. They're singing while we draw in this, this great stuff, uh, this, this, these practical options for ourselves. And, um, you know, as long as we're doing that in good faith, we're, we're receiving it because we know it's good for us. We know that it feels good to have that stability, um, then that's going to work out well for us. At the same time, Venus is square to Neptune. And uh, square to Neptune <laughs> really brings in some insecurity vibe, okay? We worry about how we look or we worry about how it looks to other people that we like the things that we like. Sometimes, you know, we just don't feel like we've ever been commit given sort of social permission to like something outside a certain sort of sphere or realm of things, right? And so we worry about what it looks to other people when we show up, you know, holding the hand of somebody they didn't think they'd see us holding their hand or wearing or doing something they didn't think they'd see us wearing or doing. Uh, but in any case, the, you know, the lesson here is to, you know, go ahead and feel that insecurity, but understand that it doesn't matter because if you are acting in good faith to draw in those more practical options for you, if what you are drawing to you is working for you, um, then it doesn't matter how it looks because it's going to work for you. Pluto is retrograde through October 8th. Okay. And, uh, you know, all that stuff I said about 
saying prayers under the moon or doing ritual or spell work uh, under the, the void of course moon of course uh, uh, especially you know the moon is our interior life and Pluto in retrograde is very much at work in our interior lives. Pluto is retrograde in Capricorn, so I say at work on purpose, okay? So Pluto in retrograde is at work in our interior lives, and it's really there to help us cut um, out unnecessary and unhelpful uh, attachments so that we can start new things that will bring us the experiences that will bring us closer to the realization of ourselves that we're looking for. Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. This is about our personal responsibilities and our com commitment to the pe the collective good, just like the waning crescent moon, the waning gibbous moon in Aquarius, Saturn retrograde in Aquarius right now. Um, you know, without cooperation, without the, without the collective, we wouldn't have, you know, nice things like cars and roads to drive them on. So, you know, we have to think about our, our, our work, social and civic engagement. You know, do we uh, sit on the civic side, for example? Do we show up to vote? Do we pay our taxes? Are we taking care of our parking fines? Are we showing up at organized events to make our vo our voices heard? Are we being counted out in the community? Uh, and, you know, if there's so something we'd like to be doing better, that's going to be really clear to us at this time. So, um, you know, give some thought to how you might commit yourself or recommit yourself or get more involved out in the community. Neptune is retrograde through December 23. All right. This is a blessing in disguise. All right. It's in its home sign of Pisces and it, it's just here to clear away the clouds of illusion. All right. The, the sort of unclarity of Neptune clears away a, a path for us so that we can look around and see our personal, emotional, intuitive, connected, creative landscape. And that gives us a fresh opportunity to sort of say, yes, this is what I want to do going forward. All right. And with all of that said, throw that one. Okay. We got the King of Rods. So yesterday, yesterday we got the not, not the nine, the seven of rods, which is wands, which is fire in the Taurus. We have water and fire here. Um, you know, King of Wands is an embodiment of mastery, of passion, and spirit, and drive, okay? So this is a person who not only has a lot of passion, spark, spirit, and drive on their side, um, but they are capable of using it to, uh, you know, to sort of rule their continent, if you will, okay? They're capable of using it to sort of garner the resources that they need in order to provide for the people that they have to provide for, okay? And and fire is often, you know, there's a, there's a tendency with fire to think about anger because that's a very fiery emotion and definitely anger can come up. There's, there, there's you know, impatience in fire and there's sort of irascibility and impetuousness in fire. But, you know, with the king, you're, you're dealing with somebody who has mastery over those impulses and who can also, you know, think with their heart and their mind as, as they seek to, um, you know, uh, to seek to resource a good life for themselves and their kingdom. And kings take wise counsel, okay? A king wouldn't pretend to know everything. So uh, this is also somebody who sort of, although they have the passion, that doesn't mean they don't stop to do their, to, to, to do their homework or to, to listen to people who have been there before. So with that, let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm really seeing this. Uh, this is sort of a trick to a, a little bit of mastery of fire and spark and drive here, okay? Because, you know, here we are, we're feeling unexpressed and we, we're also kind of arguing with people about it, either in our hearts or, or literally directly <laughs> with them. Because, you know, we feel as though somebody's act, asked us not to be our genuine selves. That's going to make us feel a little impatient, um, restless about it. And then, you know, of course, we're going to have to express that. We're going to have to say something or at least we're going to be thinking about um you know, why can't I express myself in this situation and what it is, what is it that's keeping me from doing that? But 
we have on the other side of this equation, this Sun sextile to Uranus and Mercury sextile to Uranus. It says we're clever and we're capable of turning our back on these old conditions and, and, uh, and um, becoming wise <laughs> to different conditions that might better allow us to express ourselves. Okay, so uh, fire is definitely a very self-expression kind of vibe but we you know we want to we want to be able to say what we think when we want to say it we want to be able to do what we think you know fire is very much about action so we want to be able to take actions where we want to take them um and and not have people sort of squashing our drive we have a lot of sun aspects coming up so fire is going to be coming up just in terms of um illumination and in terms of outer life drive and purpose for a while now. Taken together with the Four of Cups. You know, I kind of see like, so this person saw that they, that they, that they had been through a lot of experiences lately, emotional, intuitive, creative experiences, and maybe they felt a need to pro pause and process uh, what they had been through and and perhaps that you know made them feel a little bit pensive about the idea of taking on a new experience but hopefully you know eventually they looked to their right and they saw that that new experience on offer and that new experience could just bring them to a place where you know they can be in command of you know, where, where they can find a passion and they can find a command of their passion um, that makes them feel as though they don't have to get overwhelmed by the experience again in the future. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.